Hello and welcome to PCR TV. My name is Darren Mylott. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Galway. I'm joined today by Steve Bolling, a Canadian cardiac surgeon currently working in the United States, and Nicolo Piazza, a Canadian interventional cardiologist working in Canada. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Nick, you. the topic for discussion today is tricuspid valve disease and tricuspid, tricuspid valve intervention. Tell me, is there really an unmet clinical need for this technology? Darren, it's funny that the tricuspid valve is typically labeled the neglected um, valve uh, because there's actually a quite uh, significant number of patients out there with uh, significant TR who are not being treated. If we talk about some numbers, uh, just in the United States, there's about 1.5 to 1.6 million uh, individuals with uh, TR. Uh, if you look at the STS database from 2001 uh, and 2009, only uh, about 1,000 patients and 7,000 patients respectively underwent a tricuspid valve surgery during those years. Um, and if we actually look in our own databases of those patients undergoing transcatheter aortic or transcatheter mitral interventions, about one out of three patients has moderate to severe TR um, in those cohort of patients. So it is a uh, significant problem uh, and these patients are not being addressed properly. Steve. You're a surgeon. You guys have good techniques to fix tricuspid regurgitation. Why aren't you addressing this problem? Well, it is an unfortunate problem. Right now, uh, when we're in the operating room and we see severe tricuspid regurgitation, only 80% of us, if we're doing a mitral, will repair that tricuspid valve. Only 80%. That means one out of five is let go with severe TR. And even moderate TR, which is a two-way indication in the guidelines, uh, the U.S. guidelines, only 40 percent. So we ignore tricuspid regurgitation. We know that for those patients who come to the operating room, maybe 25 or 30 percent of the patients have significant moderate to severe TR, and yet the number, as Nico has mentioned, is very small. But it may be even higher than that. The MRI and 3D studies show that perhaps 75 percent of patients who come to the operating room for mitral surgery have already had flattening and ovoid shape changes of the tricuspid annulus, meaning that their rubber band may already be broken. Think of a rubber band with snap, snap. It may already be overstretched. And that may explain, while even with a very good mitral repair, five years later in the future, you get recurrent tricuspid regurgitation. So it is really ignored by surgeons. That's unfortunate. We had a fear that it would cause extra mortality, that it would prolong the operation, or that it would have no benefit. All of those are tending to be shown to be wrong. There really is no operative mortality addition, and I think we're starting to see that it is helpful to patients to fix their tricuspid regurgitation. Excellent. So, so we have a, an unmet need. We have evidence from surgical data that that need, need is not being addressed, but that if you do address that need, that you can really impact on patient, patients' quality of life and indeed quantity of life. Nick. How is the interventional community responding to this unmet need? Yeah, Darren, you know, uh, there are devices out there being developed uh, for this purpose. Um, these are all right-sided percutaneous transcatheter interventions to either repair or replace the uh, tricuspid valve. Uh, the first of these uh, procedures was performed in 2010, where uh, some uh, physicians implanted a uh, self-expanding nitinol valve in the descending, in the inferior vena cava, uh, in order to uh, mitigate the problems of TR. Uh, and uh, over the more recent years, uh, we've seen more repair devices going into humans. Uh, for example, last year there were approximately 36 dedicated devices um, that were implanted in the tricuspid, uh, 36 procedures performed uh, for the uh, tricuspid valve. This year, about 150 uh, in addition. And on top of that, we can add the uh, off-label use of the mitra clip, uh, giving us about 200 procedures last year and about six to 700 procedures this year. Uh, that is transcatheter interventions for the tricuspid valve. And we have some of these devices that um, uh, intend to improve the coaptation um, by uh, putting a, a, a spacer in the middle or some uh, devices who try to remodel uh, the anus uh, by direct or indirect means. So Steve, as a surgeon, what do you see as the future of tricuspid intervention? Is the future to educate better the surgical community to treat this when they're, when they're in the operating room? Or do you think that there still really is a role for uh, developing 
um, interventional techniques? Well, I think both. Obviously, both the surgical and the referring cardiology community needs to be educated about the impact of tricuspid regurgitation. Mm -hmm. Tricuspid regurgitation is bad, and no tricuspid regurgitation is good. So we need to be educated to be more aggressive in the operating room, and our cardiologists need to come to us and say, Steve, fix this. However, I think that percutaneous interventions are really important in this field because as opposed to the far end of the bell curve where the patient perhaps has symptoms and heart failure, right-sided heart failure, percutaneous interventions can affect the patients at the other end of the bell curve much earlier because of the biologic impact, of course, of a percutaneous device. They're all transvenous, they all go transfemoral, and I think this is really an important area to look And There are many devices out there being developed. There are rings which sort of recreate the surgical uh, position, and there are also non-rings, and it may be that the non-rings are interesting because if we get to the patient early enough, we don't need a full ring in there. Maybe something else will suffice for those patients. But as Nico said, we're very early in the few hundreds of implants, and we just need more data right now. Fantastic. So we've heard that there's an unmet need. We clearly have good surgical solutions, but, but they're not perhaps being applied as, as liberally as they should. And we have nascent technologies that can perhaps fill that need. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thanks, Larry.